Hello, everyone, and welcome to a new Pennywise podcast. I'm Terry Barr, your host, and uh, we are coming to you from Lee Enterprises. So happy to be with you today. Also really glad to have with me today is Natalie Campisi. She is the mortgage and housing analyst with Forbes Advisor, and uh, we have some exciting news to tell you about just coming out within the last couple of days, places you may want to live, right, Natalie? That's right. Yep. We're looking okay. at some of the most affordable places. This is really interesting because there is also a brand new survey out talking about um, asking people during the pandemic, if you could move, would you? 62% of Americans working from home right now are saying, yes, I want to move. <laughs> and 58% say, I'd love to be in a bigger city compared to where they are right now. 42% say, not me. I want to go live in a small town or the country. Does mm -hmm. any of that surprise you to start this off? Not at all. I've been tracking this um, since the the pandemic emerged and we quickly started seeing trends that people that were living in big cities, especially people with families, wanted more space. Um, they wanted, you know, to get out of their small cramped apartments and um, and and move to a place where it was more affordable and they could have a backyard. A backyard. <laughs> Isn't that wonderful? Oh my gosh. So we are looking at this list that you just put together, the 10 most affordable cities where you can buy a house. Right. What did you have to really dive into to figure out who belongs on this list? So first we wanted to sort of define what a city was because there are so many, you know, we, so we limited the list to cities with 100,000 people or more. And from there, we kind of looked at 100 cities. And from there, we looked at factors that kind of affect everyone as far as, um, you know, income and expenses. So we looked at median income in these cities. And then we also looked at the list house listing prices. So how much houses were listed for sale as on, on websites and realtor.com supplied us with that information. We looked at utility bills, food bills, um, income taxes, property taxes, and we filtered the cities through all of those sort of um, factors. And then from there, we got our top 10 most affordable cities. That's a lot, but I'm going to assume if, if you are a person and you are the one saying, yep, I want to move somewhere, those would be a lot of the factors that person would want to know about. Is that right? Absolutely. Sure. Mm -hmm. You know, you're looking at, you know, how much are people making in this area and how much are people spending on like the, the big bills? So, you know, your house and utilities, taxes, those sort of things. Okay. Should we dive into your list? Yes, let's okay. go. <laughs> okay, again, we mentioned this is the top 10 of affordable cities where you might be able to buy a house. Um, number 10, we're, we're going to do the big reveal going backwards and save number one for the end. Oh, number what? 10 is Kansas City, Kansas. That's right. Okay, <laughs> why? <laughs> well, Kansas City, Kansas is, you know, in the Midwest, which a lot of our cities, spoiler alert, are in the Midwest, um, and it's very affordable. You're looking at a hundred and seventy thousand dollar median listing price for a home, wow. which is yeah, incredibly affordable for for most people um, who are earning median income. Even in Kansas uh, City, it's a little bit lower than um, some other areas. So the median salary there is around $37,000. Um, but if you have, you know, if you have a partner or you're married and you go into the house together, certainly $170,000 is probably affordable. And then you're also looking at uh, a pretty low down payment. Um, if you get an FHA loan, you only have to put 3.5% down. So, so this is a great place if you want to buy a home. How about that? Mm -hmm. Then we move to Buffalo, New York. Now you gotta like cold and snow if you're moving uh, in this area of New York, right? Absolutely, <laughs> yeah. absolutely. 
And Buffalo is a great place. It is full of young people. Um, it's kind of gone through this transformation in the last 10 years. So um, there's lots of restaurants and uh, entertainment and all sorts of things to do. So if you're, you know, a young couple, young family or a single and, and just wanting to, to find a place that's affordable, um, Buffalo is actually a great choice. And, and if you like the cold, even better. <laughs> Start to snowshoe. That's what I've learned to do in the cold. <laughs> snow yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And at <laughs> Buffalo, the median listing price is under 200,000. It's 184,000 and the median salary is around 41,000. Oh so, my gosh. Yeah. I'm shocked whenever you say that there's something that's under 200,000 anymore, anywhere in the country. So this is amazing. Yeah. Um, Number eight on your list, Montgomery, Alabama. What is it about Montgomery? Well, Montgomery is um, has some of the lowest real estate taxes, which is wonderful. Um, you're going to you're going to pay about um, five hundred and the, the median annual real estate taxes is around five hundred and twelve dollars a year. If you oh my know. gosh! I know. <laughs> yep, and. Um, the median home listing price is 192,000, so another sub $200,000 city, um, and it's a fun city. You know, there's lots to do in Montgomery. Um, it's in the south, so you get the warm weather, um, and I think it's a it's a great place if you're you know just starting out and you want to you know to get a starter home that's affordable. Wonderful! Wow. So mm -hmm. moving on to seven, then we have Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Milwaukee is a fun place. It's a great place. It's very affordable. The median listing price in Milwaukee um, in 2020 was $167,000. There's so, that number again. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. Yeah. And, you know, wow. right there on, on um, Lake Michigan. And, mm -hmm. you know, it's a, it's, there's a lot of things to do for, you know, young families in Milwaukee. There's a great beer scene, which is not surprising. So, um, yeah. And, and for people that are maybe looking to move back home or, you know, they, um, they're from that area. Uh, it's kind of good to know that there are some affordable houses still, still available there. No kidding. Um, now we bounce back to New York and it's Rochester, New York. Why, yes. why Rochester now? Rochester, uh, the median listing price there was $151,000 in 2020. Wow. So um, yeah, this is, uh, uh, it saw some of the biggest leaps in um, home price appreciation, um, according to uh, Adam Data, which is a, an analytics company that looks at real estate. Um, in fact, I think it was up 49.9% percent um, according to Adam data. So this is a, a big leap in home price appreciation. And uh, some of the reason for that is people who live in the city in New York City during the pandemic, you know, we've heard lots of stories about um, people leaving New York, um, everything is shut down and you start staring at your four, your very small apartment, your four walls, and you start dreaming of you know, garden spaces and backyards. So a lot of people started moving and Rochester um, seems to have gotten some of that outflow. Wow. Mm -hmm. um, number five, and I know people who live here now. I know other people who have moved away because they wanted to move somewhere else, but okay. yet Baltimore, Maryland. So I've got somebody on both ends of this one. Tell us why people are moving to Baltimore. So Baltimore is a great city. You know, it's it's near DC. It's you know it's in a great location, um, and the median listing price in 2020 was 191 thousand dollars. Which they're is still under 200. Under 200 in some places. So what's interesting about Baltimore is that um, you know it's it's very attractive for people who are leaving expensive places like DC. Mm. The problem is, I spoke to a realtor uh, in Baltimore, and he said there are some neighborhoods 
that are really sought after. And you're probably not going to get a great deal in those neighborhoods. So his advice to people who wanted to live in Baltimore and not break the bank is to be flexible and where you live. Um, so, and also be ready with your pre-approval, have your down payment ready, kind of have all your ducks in a row because there, there is some fierce competition in Baltimore. Um, so we might not see that median listing price stay under no 200000 for much longer, but it's, it's good to know that there are still affordable pockets there if you're interested in, in living there. Okay. Oh my gosh. Yes. I, I definitely want to at least go see Baltimore. Yes. Um, Memphis, Tennessee is now number four. I am yes. so curious about Memphis too. Tell me all about it. So Memphis, Tennessee is an incredible area. It's in the South. It's got a wonderful history, great music history, uh, blues, rock and roll. Um, and it is very affordable. Um, right now, the median listing price, well, in 2020, I should say, was $123,000, which seems one, like- One, two, three, uh, 123. One, two, three. Wow. <laughs> so yeah. it seems like now is the time to get there if you think you want to buy and maybe you you enjoy a city like Memphis with all the things you're talking about. Get in while the getting is good, maybe. I would say so. I mean, it's got a growing tech scene, which is really interesting. Um, there's a lot of uh, emerging tech companies in Memphis. Um, great barbecue, if you like that. So there's a lot to, to uh, be desired in, in Memphis. And yeah, like you said, I mean, this is the time to buy. I am sure prices are probably rising. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay, so we're down to number three. Unless you Did you have something else you wanted to add about any of the other ones at this point? I don't think so. I mean, okay. I think that, yeah, I think that we're, yeah. I feel like we need a drum roll when we get to these. <laughs> Number three, I know. Number three is Toledo, Ohio. Now this one surprises me. I can't wait to tell um, other folks about Toledo. I've lived in Ohio, but I wanna hear from you why this is a place to buy a house. So Toledo is incredibly, incredibly affordable. The median home listing price in 2020 was just $95,000. Oh. Um, so uh, it's, yeah, it's, it's a very affordable area. Um, you know, it's, um, of course, Toledo kind of suffered from a lot of the, the problems that the Rust Belt economy saw in the 1980s, but it's slowly recovering um, like, like many, many areas in the Rust Belt. And it, it's in the Midwest, which tends to be more affordable, just generally speaking, um, than you know, the West Coast, certainly the West Coast or the East Coast. So um, it's not too surprising that that Ohio is in there, especially you know, in Toledo. Um, but really 95,000 is incredible. The median salary is a little bit lower than some of the other areas. Um, it's about 37,000, um, but you know, for a family, yeah, a, couple, a couple or, you know, it, it could be affordable on, on those salaries certainly. And um, yeah, it's, you know, it's not too far from Michigan, from Detroit, it's not too far from Chicago. So it's kind of in a, in a sweet spot there. And obviously affordable to live there. That is incredible. Yep. Um, staying in Ohio now, Cleveland. Cleveland has really moved up in the last couple of years, hasn't it? It sure has. Yep. So Cleveland is, you know, about uh, $50,000 more uh, than than um, Toledo. So the median listing price in 2020 there was 140,000 and people are making more money in Cleveland as well. They're, the median salary is about $47,000. So, um, you know, you see a little bit of a bump in salary and um, it's a young city. The median age is around 36. Ooh. So for, yeah, so for people who are uh, singles or, or young, you know, they're uh, millennials that are starting their careers or can work from home. This is sort of a vibrant place and there's a lot to do there. Yeah, the downtown's pretty great. Yeah. Okay, here we go. Here's number one, everyone. Number one coming your way of an affordable city where you might be able to buy a house. I'm so curious about this one, Natalie. <laughs> Detroit, Michigan. And I do, I have a, a, a soft spot for Detroit. Tell us yep. all about it. I have a soft spot for Detroit as well. I, I've covered it and I just think it's such an interesting city. It's um, dealt with so many setbacks, 
but um, uh, you know, we're seeing before the pandemic, it started to, to pick up pace and there was a lot of investment in Detroit. People, young people were moving to downtown Detroit and Corktown. Uh, the pandemic stalled a little bit of that, but I really believe that it's gonna pick back up. And if you wanna buy a house in Detroit, the median home listing price in 2020 was just $59,000, which oh. I mean, you know, some people have cars that are more expensive than that. So yes, <laughs> and, and GM aren't they headquartered in Detroit? So when you yes. think about cars, yeah, <gasps> there are. Yep, yep. And of course, you know, it's you have to keep in mind that you know Detroit is a sprawling city. It's yes. seen a, a lot of um, you know uh, kind of blight and and problems. So um, you're you know some neighborhoods are are still kind of getting on their feet and there's some infrastructure in some areas is not there. So that's something you want to keep in mind. Um, mm -hmm. So, but as downtown and Corktown develop, you know, usually what happens is those outer areas that are more affordable start developing yeah. too. So um, there, it's a really interesting place, a vibrant, amazing history Detroit has and um, a, a lot of interesting things going on right there now going on there right now. Right. So I think the young people who are adventurous and want sort of to live that city life, but mm -hmm. not spend a ton of money, Detroit might be an interesting place to check out. I would say definitely. <laughs> and you've got to love, they have, um, if you're into sports, they have their sports stadiums all kind of right on the edge of downtown. It, it's just, and it's a walkable city. You feel um, pretty good walking around downtown. At least I know I did. Yep, absolutely. No, for sure. There's, you know, lots of development was happening in Detroit. Right. So I'm really excited to see what happens there. I spoke with um, a, a small business owner in Detroit who specializes in restoring um, uh, old brick and, and things like that. Ooh. And I was curious if he saw business pick up, if he saw a lot of like, you know, fixer uppers and people wanting to kind of restore these old beautiful houses in Detroit. And he said, Definitely. He said business is just booming. He's seeing a lot of young people come in from out of state, out of the city right. and um, invest in, in these old houses. And he's in he's getting, you know, lots of business restoring them. So uh, it's, it's pretty interesting. We'll see what happens with Detroit. That's great. I can't wait to check back with you for next year and see yes. how these cities are faring. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. Wow. OK, so you also put together another list, uh, the 10 affordable cities for college graduates to buy a home. Now, what makes this one different than your other top 10 list? So this one is a little bit different. We had all of this data. So we started looking at, you know, different angles. And one of the things we looked at was um, year over year price growth. So um, which cities were, you know, growing at a faster pace than, than other cities. And we, we paired that with um, the median income for college grads. And when we put those two things together, we kind of got interesting results. And the thinking behind it was when you're a college grad, um, whether you're, you know, you maybe you just got your master's degree or you just got your bachelor's degree. And, and you know, you might be an older college grad or someone that just, um, you know, you want to, you don't necessarily want to rent, you want to buy you also don't want to lose money on your investment. Maybe you don't want to be in a place for a long time. We wanted to see which places were appreciating fastest, but were still affordable. I know that's kind of a lot. So that's where this list comes in. These are affordable places that are appreciating very fast um, and, and maybe a place for a college graduate to, to check out. So kind of a fun place maybe to live as well. Uh -huh. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. A fun place to live, something that's growing. You know, uh, it, it's it's not a San Francisco or a New York City or an L.A. that's established, right. but very expensive. These are places that are that are exciting, too, in their own way and, and maybe have different things to offer, maybe for families and stuff like that. So what do you have on the list? I'm not going to do the top 10 because okay. these are really not in any order, are they? It's just kind of all of the criteria you just mentioned is what goes into these 10 that you chose. Absolutely. Yep. Okay. So these are, so these are uh, some of the places are a little bit more expensive. For example, I think Pittsburgh is, is a great example. The, the median listing price growth year over year was 25%, which is oh. really incredible. Yeah. When you consider that 
home price appreciation is around three to 4% a yeah. year. Yeah. On average, um, this is 25%. Um, and for a college grad, the median salary is about 54,000, um, close to 55,000. And median home listing prices are around 271,000. So they're not ultra cheap like our other list, but they're still not super expensive. And um, again, if you have a two person household and two incomes going into this, uh, this could be a good investment. And as we all know, Pittsburgh is a great city, an old yes. city, lots to do. So yeah, this is a really a, a one that I think um, people who want to make some money maybe on their investment. Would check no you. kidding. I'll meet you there. <laughs> wow. And it's so pretty with um, the hills around the city. And then obviously the rivers that come together. It's gorgeous. It's gorgeous. Yep, oh. absolutely. What what Oh yeah, go ahead. Yeah. I was just gonna say one city that I thought was interesting, and I, I don't know if anyone else will, but I, I found it. I, I've never been, but uh talking to different people about it, I was I, I do want to go now was uh is Tulsa, Oklahoma, which um I found <laughs> out was like a it's a boomtown city and has all of this incredible architecture. So a lot of um, mid-century modern homes, a lot of, um, uh, it's, I guess it was called sort of the Paris of the, the Midwest, a lot of um, Parisian architecture. Uh, and so a lot of young families go there and they, they want to buy these old historic homes, oh. uh, fix them up. And, and so I thought that was pretty interesting. You know, if you have a family, it's, it's a, a safe city. Um, good schools, that sort of thing. And you can live in a really interesting house potentially. Oh, wow. What is the like average price of the homes in Tulsa? So the median listing price there is a little more expensive. Um, it's about $293,000. Yep. <laughs> yeah, it's a little more expensive. Year over year growth is over 17%. So it's growing. People are buying. And yeah, it's, it's um, this, the market there is pretty hot right now. And for college grads, the median uh, average, the median income is around forty-seven thousand. Oh, okay. So in some ways, again, if you have maybe one or two of you together, that's not too bad. You can do that. Yep. Any other ones for college grads jump out at you? I know. Um, in looking through the list, there was also Detroit and Cleveland on it. Same. But mm -hmm. what other ones did you have that you thought were interesting? Um, I think, you know, you have places like um, in the in the Southwest, uh, El Paso, Texas, oh, which wow. is pretty interesting. It's um, the the year over year growth there is 10.5%. So pretty, pretty good numbers. Um, and then the median home listing price in El Paso is $211,000. So if you want sun, sunshine, yes. and <laughs> affordable living. El Paso could be interesting. You're right across the border from Mexico, which, you know, um, there you, so you have a lot of that influence, like great food, that sort of thing. Um, uh, so that's another really interesting area, I thought. Mm -hmm. Wow. What do you think out of, you know, this entire survey? I know you did other lists as well, but what's the biggest things that are um, standing out to you, especially looking at it from the whole pandemic, and it being 2020, what jumped out at you? Um, so, you know, what jumped out at me was that people, one of the uh, the biggest share of home buyers or, or the biggest share of home buyers, I should say, are millennials. So, you know, they're, they're hitting 40 now, they have families. So I think what we're seeing is that that sort of life stage pan out in real time. I think the pandemic kind of um, put a little bit of pressure on them and accelerated their decision to maybe leave some of these high priced cities, maybe where they started their careers, their families, and they've decided, you know, it's time to find our home and you know, a lot of them are leaving places like New York City and right. San Francisco, Los Angeles, the Bay Area. I've heard stories like people leaving the Bay Area to to go to uh, Sacramento, California, and oh, wow. the housing market there is just going gangbusters. 
So that so and they're driving up prices. And so like teachers in Sacramento can't afford houses there. So they're having to, to move. So I mean, that's been really interesting is to see these patterns of movement, you know, and yeah. and people kind of searching for their home. And um, you know, one thing that's interesting is not everyone's going back to where they grew up. So you think, okay, well, that maybe the you know, people who moved to LA or to New York to start their careers are going back to where they where their families are. And a lot of them aren't. A lot of them, um, you know, we've heard stories about Austin. Yes. So Austin is drawing, you know, New Yorkers and Californians, and they want that um, fun city lifestyle, but they want to be able to buy a home too. You know, it's great to hear at least when we go through all these lists that there sounds to be a little bit for almost anyone. I loved how you mentioned though, right at the beginning to kind of have your ducks in a row when you're getting ready to do this. Is that something you kind of want to leave with people as we end today? Is that something important for people to think about? Don't just go there and do it, but kind of prepare yourself for it. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. I would definitely say, you know, if you're thinking about, you know, it's when you're paying a lot of money in rent and there nothing is open and, you know, you start looking around and you see your friends buying these beautiful homes with pools and they're paying a fraction of what you're paying. It's very tempting to just just to leave and, and buy a home somewhere. And sometimes sight unseen, I've heard stories of people just kind of doing a Zoom walkthrough and, and never even you know, seeing the neighborhood. Or So I would definitely say, because you're paying so much in closing costs, mm -hmm. most experts say you wanna stay in your home for three to five years in order to recoup those co closing costs so that if you do sell, you don't lose money. So. Just imagine, you know, if you do buy this house, you want to stay there for at least three years. So take time to look at the neighborhood, to go to visit the city if you've never been, you know, do, do that stuff because the last thing you want is buyer's remorse. You get there and you realize, you know, once everything opens and hopefully vaccines roll out and we're rolling again, you know, a year later, you're not like, I wish I were in, in New York again, or I wish I were here again. So, you know, really take time to think about it. It's a big purchase. Um, and also because it is a seller's market everywhere, even in these affordable cities, there's lots of competition. So mm -hmm. make sure you find a really good real estate agent that knows the neighborhood that can um you know can work with you to, to make sure that you're you're getting your goals met your needs met and that sort of thing and be ready um when you start looking with your down payment all of your stuff because there's going to be other people that that probably will be bidding on on the same house too sounds like a good reason to start visiting yeah. some of these cities <laughs> yeah, sure Yep. Oh my goodness. Um, anything that you want to leave everybody with any just sort of one thought? Is this is this kind of the time to do this or or how do you prepare yourself, I guess? Yeah, I think so. I think, you know, mm -hmm. uh, home ownership is one of the ways is is the main way most Americans build wealth. Um, so a lot of people, you know, they they're paying a lot in rent and they and if you're ready to kind of find a place and settle down and start building equity. Um, you know, this is, this could be a great time to buy. However, um, uh, however, inventory is very tight. So home prices are elevated. And what I would say is don't go over your budget. Don't drain your savings account to buy a house. The other thing is, um, cities with affordable homes also uh, come with lower down payments. And that's one of the biggest hurdles to buying a home is mm. that down payment. Mm -hmm. So definitely look for um, down payment assistance programs. There are a ton all across the country, cities, uh, states, they offer their own. So I would say definitely check out that. Uh, make sure you get the right loan. FHA loans have um, low down payment right. requirements. So those are sort of the things I would I would think about for sure before you buy. You are terrific. Um, Natalie Campisi, mortgage and housing analyst with Forbes Advisor, giving us uh, the rundown um, just out lists on affordable homes. If you're a college grad or you're just ready to pick up and go, Natalie, thanks so much. You're 
it was so nice talking to you. I, this was so much fun. Thank you so much for having me. I agree. And I learned a lot today of where I think I might want to go next. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> oh, everybody. Thanks for joining us for another Pennywise podcast. And we'll have another new episode for you coming up next week. Again, uh, Lee Enterprises and I'm Terry Barr. Thank you. All right.